Let's take a look at some operations on independent variables now. The last video did dependent variables, so we were basically doing operations on signal amplitudes. Now that we're doing operations on the independent variable t, we'll actually be doing things like time scaling, time shifting, reversing, things like that. In this first video, we'll look exclusively at time scaling. So what do we mean by time scaling? So let's say that I have some signal x of t, and then I go and I create a new signal y of t that is related to x of t in this way. The time variable t has been replaced by a t. So a, this number, is what we call the scaling factor. And depending on the value of a, one of two things can happen. For a larger than one, we have what we call a compressed version of the signal. And we'll do some examples here in a minute, but essentially whatever x of t looked like originally, y of t will look just like that, except it will have been shrunk on the time axis. And then if we have values of a that are in between 0 and 1, so say 0 0.2, 0 0.4, something like that, then if we look at y of t, it will be kind of an expanded version of x of t. So it'll still look like the original signal, but it will be kind of stretched out or expanded on the time axis. So that's what time scaling is. It's just replacing t with a t. So let's go ahead and do some real simple examples, and we'll basically keep it as simple as possible by working with an original shape x of t that's just this unit pulse. So it only exists from time 0 to 1, and on that time interval it has a value of 1. So it's 1 at time 0, it's 1 at time 1, and then outside of this time interval it is a 0 function. So here in our first example we're going to create the signal y of t equals x of 2t. So we know that a right here has a value of 2, so this should lead to kind of a time compression of this rectangular pulse. Let's go through this slowly though. Let's, the way I like to do this is actually make a little table and pick values for t. So as an example, let's pick a value of t equals 0, and then see what the argument of this function is at that time. So if t is 0, what is 2t? Well, 2t is 2 times 0 is 0. And now we can go evaluate the function at that time. So what is x of 0? x of 0 right here is 1. So I have a value of 1 in that column. And then we can keep doing this for different values of time. When t is 0.25, 2 times that is a half. Over here at time a half, my function is equal to 1 still. What about 0.5? Well, 0 0.5, 2 times that is 1, right here at 1. My function is still equal to 1, so I have a 1 there. And then what about 0 0.75? 2 times 0 0.75 is 1 and a half. 1 and a half is, you know, right here, and my function is 0, so I have a 0 in that column. So right now, we can kind of see what happens. We have a value of 1 for times 0 up to a half, and then somewhere a little past that, it goes to zero. So it might be interesting to pick maybe the number 0 0.51. 0 0.51 times 2 is 1.02. That's just oh so slightly past this edge, which is also a zero. So now we can take these values of time and these values of the function. These values of the function right here are y of t, because y of t equals x of 2t, and I can plot that. So plotting it versus time, we know once we move just slightly past 0.5 y of t has gone to zero. So if you look at this shape and you look at this shape, you say, oh wow, those look exactly the same, but be careful, pay attention to the time axes. y of t is only on from zero to 0.5, whereas x of t was on from zero to one. So y of t has been shrunk by a factor of two, or it's been compressed by a factor of two, just like we thought it would. All right, let's do another example. Exact same starting equation, x of t, but now we're going to let y of t be x of one-third t. So in this case, a is one-third. And based on the previous chart, we know what should happen. This should lead to a time expansion of this shape. So instead of a shape that has a width of 1 in time, it should get stretched out on the time axis. Let's do the same thing we did before. Let's make our little table. Pick a value of t. When t is 0, one-third times that's still 0. So I'm going to have a value of 1 for my function. When t is 1, 
1 times a third is a third, so that puts me right here. My function is still equal to 1. When t is 2, 2 times a third is 2 thirds, so now I'm right here, and I still have a value of 1. When t is 3, 3 times a third is 1, so I'm right here. My function still has a value of 1. So look at that. I'm already up to time 3, and my function is still on. So we can already tell it's going to be kind of stretched out much more. When t is 4, 4 thirds puts me right here. x of t is off, so y of t at that time is 0. So now I have all the times. I have all of the corresponding values of the function. I can go ahead and make a plot for y of t. And it looks like this. And as you can see, this is a much more expanded version of our original starting signal. So that's how I like to do things when I have a kind of graphical plot of a function and I'm performing time scaling on that function. Sometimes, though, you just kind of have the math, so to speak. So let's look at an equation example here. And the rule is pretty simple. Anytime we do time scaling, we, we replace the original time value with a t. So let's do a specific example of that. Let's say I'm starting off with x of t is equal to t squared e to the minus 2t. And I want to create the new function y of t, which is x of 2t. So we've done time scaling with a equals 2. Well, algebraically, what does that mean? That means replace every t with 2t. So I need to look up here and find that t and this t right here, and I need to replace them with 2t. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first t is right here. So I like to put parentheses to make it very clear I'm about to substitute that out, and I write down 2t. I've replaced it algebraically. And then e to the minus, again, I like to put a big parentheses right here and replace that t with 2t, and that's my answer. If I wanted to, I could just leave it like this. There's nothing horribly wrong with that answer. But in this case, it's pretty easy to simplify. If I go ahead and square that, I get 4t squared. And then e to the minus 2 times quantity 2t is e to the minus 4t. So if you just have an equation, the algebra for doing time scaling is very straightforward. You just find all your instances of t and replace it with a t. And if you want, you can just leave it just like that unless you're told to simplify. In this case, I went ahead and simplified it because it was pretty straightforward. So that's the first kind of independent operation that we're looking at, independent because t is this independent variable. This was time scaling. In the next video, we'll look at the time reversal operation.